All right, so we have our general concept about SEO, SEM. We'll get into details now. Whenever I talk about getting found on the search engines, I'm usually going to be generic. I'm going to say getting found on the search engines. I'm not going to say how to rank on Google, how to optimize for Google, 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 Google. Google is not the only search engine out there. What's the second most popular search engine? Bing. Yahoo used to be used, Yahoo used to be number one, but you know, Titans fall. So now we've got Google. Google at one point had 80% market share. At one point had 80% market share. Now it's at about 60%. Bing at one point had 0% market share. Now it has about 20% market share. One is gaining, one is losing. I'm not saying that Bing is going to be the next Google, but 20% market share is still hundreds of millions, probably billions of searches. So it would be foolish to not also optimize your site for Bing, even though it's only got 20% market share. We'll go into details about the search engines very soon, but that's how I'm going to be talking about it. I'm not going to say, let's optimize for Google, let's do this for Google. No, I'm going to say, let's optimize for search engines. Because there's also Yahoo still around. Ask Jeeves is still around. Alta Vista is still around. AOL Search is still around. DuckDuckGo. Have you heard of that search engine? <laughs> DuckDuckGo. That one is uh, that one's around. That one's relatively popular, and uh, there's lots of ways for people to search. So I'm going to be talking about the search engines, not Google specifically, but what we'll be talking about applies to them all. Um, I've got an activity that we'll do here. Um, go ahead and open your web browser, anyone you'd like. We've got them all right here. If you've still got your browser open, great. Uh, I'm going to just go to Google Chrome, whatever. Let's go to google.com. Um, last year, we celebrated in, oh, two years ago now, 2014, they celebrated an anniversary. <laughs> Um, how much was it? I think it was 15 years, something like that. Google has been around 15 years or so. Yahoo has been around more than 20 years. Um, so the web itself, websites, have been around for about 26 years. You might have thought, well, I thought the internet was older than that. Yes, the internet is older. But the web is about 26 years old. Websites are about 26 years old. The internet are all of these networks, all of these computers interconnected with each other. A network interconnected. The internet. The internet is older. It's from about the 60s. The web, in the last 26 years, literally has changed the world. Uh, and it's not, it's not an exaggeration. You know, we, we can buy things online. We can connect with friends and family. We can learn anything. We can contact people that we don't know. We can start a revolution, literally. Remember the Arab Spring in the Middle East? That was social media. That was websites. That was a technology that didn't exist 26 years ago, 7 years ago, 9 years ago. So this has really changed the world. And Google is one of the big names, of course, on the web. And it's, for many people, the de facto. For many people, it's the internet itself. It's a web browser. It's a search engine. It's everything but it's not every aspect of the internet. Let's go to Google here and let's do a search for your name. Search your name and search your name the way that you're known. If your full name is William Jefferson Clinton, search for Bill Clinton. Um, search for the name, for your name, of yourself as you know yourself or as you want to be known. So, I search for myself. My result is 27 million results. There's some pictures at the top. There's this special call-out box on the side. Your results might be different. Your results might be different. So guys, a little, a little quieter here, please. Your results might be different. That's okay. The search engines actually show different things to different people for different reasons, which we'll talk about. But what I'm seeing here, the number one result, 
Victor Campos, the actor. That's not me. Number two result, my LinkedIn. Here's my LinkedIn on the second result out of 20 whatever million results. Third result, my profile for San Diego Continuing Education. Fourth result, that's not my Facebook. Next result, that is one of my websites. Next result, I'm not that lawyer. Next result, I don't have that video. Next result, that is mine. And then the last result is mine. Out of 10 results, about six or so are me. Um, make a note of the website brandyourself.com. This is one of many emerging reputation management websites. If I'm a lawyer, if I'm a realtor, if I'm the face of my company, it's also important for me to manage my reputation online. For, so when someone searches, they get the best results. These companies provide free and paid services to help you do that, to show the best results and to bury the worst results. Because right now we're doing the, the classic activity of Googling yourself. You're searching for yourself. What does Google know about me? And so if you have a free account at brandyourself.com, that can be one of the possible things that you put out there to the world positively that helps manage your reputation. There's another one literally called reputation.com. There's also aboutme.com. I think it's actually about.me. Aboutme.com, brandyourself.com, reputation.com. There's many of these sites out there. What, what are the good ones? The ones I just mentioned. Aboutme.com, brandyourself.com, reputation.com. They have paid and they have free services. You can get by with most things um, most of the time with the free way. Obviously, as I said earlier, the paid way could be faster, but the free way will still work. So a bunch of results appeared. I can go down to page 200, whatever. But many of these results are me. I'm going to compare this now. I'm going to open a different web browser, if you'd like, or a different window, whatever. I'm going to open a Firefox, let's say, just a different browser. And this time I'm going to compare with the second most popular search engine, Bing. Go to the website, bing.com, B-I-N-G.com. You might have never heard of Bing. You might have never used Bing, but you are one of millions of people that use the internet. And as I said before, and I can show you the stats, Bing is increasing 20%. You know, a few months ago, it was 18%. A few months ago, it was 12%. Years ago, it was 0%. Now it's 20%. People globally, on average, are using Bing 20% of the time. And it's another search engine. It's like Google. Google search engine helps you find stuff online. Bing search engine helps you find stuff online. Each one thinks they can do it the better way. Because basically, think about them as a company and a product. Bing company, Google company, the product is a relevant page of results. Each one thinks they can do it the best way. It's their algorithm. It's their technique. They're both browsing the same web, the same websites, the same Twitter, the same Facebook, but they're both thinking they can show you the best results. You're going to see that visually right away it's different from Bing. It's going to have a, a cool picture of the day, news of the day, but it's still about search. So do another search on Bing. Search the same way you searched on Google, your name, Search your name on, on, on Bing the same way you search for it on, on Google. Bing is telling me 5 million results. Again, it's searching the same web, but it feels it found 5 million relevant results instead of 27 million results that may or may not be relevant. It has a page of results. It has a, this sort of call-out box on the side that seems to focus on the most famous Victor Campos, which is an actor born in 1935. I was not born in 1935. I was not in Scarface. <laughs> but we do share a birthday. We both have a birthday in January. 
So number one result is the Internet Movie Database to that actor's profile. Number two is a LinkedIn result. It's not actually linking directly to my LinkedIn page. It's linking to the top 25 victors on LinkedIn. It's got pictures just like on Google, but hey, that's me. So my picture shows up there. That Facebook is not me. There is my LinkedIn right there, actually, a little bit lower in the results, but there it is. Victor Campos Photography, that's not me. Victor Ce Celebrity, that's not me. White Pages. There's my profile for Southwestern College, another of my results. So a few less results compared to Google, but notice also how it's a little bit different in that it tells you my title and industry from LinkedIn, where Google doesn't. It just says, here's, the, his, here's his LinkedIn but doesn't tell you much deeper information. So let's back up here. How many of you found something on Google that you were not expecting? Raise your hand. Okay. How many of you found something on Bing that you were not expecting? And how many of you found something on Bing that you didn't find in Google? Okay, so obviously a very biased survey, but here's one of the reasons why also to think about optimizing for Bing. Different results could appear. You say, yeah, well, I've never used Bing. My family's never heard of Bing. Who cares? Again, 20% global traffic. Um, Google's got the big one, got the big uh, piece of the pie. Google had the biggest piece of the pie. Well, larger piece of the pie. It's going down for various reasons. Um, Google used to have a contract, a partnership with Apple. When you got your brand new shiny iPhone, it would have Google search built in. When you got your brand new shiny iMac, Google search was built in. Then the contract ended, and Apple decided to go with Bing. So now you're going to see Bing search default on iPhones. You can change it, of course, back to Google. People, will, people that really care about that will go back to Google, sure. People that don't know the difference and just want to search and find that taco shop won't care. They'll just search. And so uh, that's one possible reason also for them increasing market share. They've got more they've got a partnership that Google lost. Question. Do you say how many people say, hey Siri, she's looking up for that Yeah. It could be we'd have to check your particular settings, because you know people can change settings and all of that. Uh, but by default we're starting to see that. It happened a, at least a year ago, I believe, that contract changed. Um, my, uh, my friend has a Prius and she's got that cool panel on the dashboard where you can tap it and do stuff and search maps and all of that. I was playing with it, I, I opened up the search feature, guess what? Powered by Bing. So her Prius, I don't know if current ones have them, but her Prius has Bing search. Um, if you go out and buy a brand new computer, a brand new Windows computer, let's say you're a Windows person rather than a Mac person, if you go buy a brand new Windows computer, off the shelf right now, it will probably come with Windows 10. Windows 10 comes from the company Microsoft. Microsoft also owns Bing. So the brand new Windows computers have Bing as the default search. You can change it, of course. People do. The funny thing that I notice is that sometimes when you're on, when you're, when you're on your web browser and you've got Bing as your default search, and you go over to Google, it kind of begs you, don't you want to change it back to Google? Have you seen that at the very top? The web is better with Google. So that's why, one of the reasons why this search engine is increasing. It's, it's got these partnerships that help it get in front of more people. And it works because people, sometimes they don't really, they don't care. And Google has, has become such an entrenched part of our society, for good or for bad, that you just say, yeah, I don't know what that is, Google it. What, what are we going to have for lunch? Google it. But that's why I'm always going to be talking about search it, because it's not the only search engine. Um, what's that? Exactly. That's that's what I was going to say. That the term has become so genericized. If I say if I have a if I have a, a cold, I might say, can you hand me a Kleenex? Technically, that's a brand of facial tissue. So can I say, can you give me a facial tissue? Let's uh, throw this trash out in the dumpster. Dumpster is actually a trademark. Dumpster is the name of a particular outdoor 
covered trash receptacle. We don't say outdoor covered trash receptacle, we say dumpster. Mm -hmm. Kleenex, dumpster, there's many of these names that have become so synonymous with what they are that they've become genericized in a way. Uh, they might have even sometimes lost their copyright claim. Google, who knows if that'll happen. In the culture, perhaps, it has. Legally, perhaps it hasn't. That's why I'm going to be talking about search engines. Google search engine, Bing search engine, Yahoo search engine. Not always just talking about Google, because we want to optimize for both. And then that leaves Yahoo. Yahoo actually, nowadays, gets many of its results or uses the algorithm from Bing and Google. So in the beginning, they had their own technology, their own algorithm to, to sift through the web, Yahoo, and give you the results. They saw their market share. They used to be the, the Google of it all. They used to have 90% market share when the web was very young. Then Ask Jeeves came out, and Alta Vista, and Dogpile, and Google, and Bing, etc., and they lost a lot of market share. So now their current tactic is they've got contracts with Bing and with Google for some of their results and such to go and show up on Yahoo. So if we optimize for Google and Bing, we're still hitting Yahoo. Let's further compare. I'm going to go back to Google. This time, if you've got a company, search for your company name. Search for it the way it's supposed to be spelled and such. Don't search the website or don't search what it is. My company is PMD Interactive. I'm just going to search PMD Interactive. Nothing special, just your basic company search. If you don't have a company to search for, search my company or another company, whatever. Let me show you the results here. PMD Interactive on Google Search. 356,000 results. Number one result. Great. I'm optimizing. I'm number one, right? This is a trick question. I'm number one on Google. I'm number one on Google, but obviously by searching the company name. So if a person is trying to hire my company for web design, they're going to search for web design, not my company name. I'm showing this page of results simply to show you what does Google know about my online presence, my company's online presence. It knows our website. Great. That's the minimum. It also knows that we've got a Yelp profile, Facebook, Twitter, uh, an app on the Android store, the LinkedIn, the YouTube, and something that I just saw here, I don't know what this is, alignable.com, and then the MapQuest. So this is the aspect of things of SEM. What else are you doing outside of your website? Because here Google found 356,000 results. Do the same search on Bing. The same company search on Bing to compare. I'm number one on Bing here also, but again, this is just a false positive. I don't care that it's number one, because if a person really knew our website, they would go to our website, or they would accidentally type it in search and get our website anyway. This is a false search. I'm interested in what else does Bing know about us. But also notice the difference here. Bing, the result of Bing, also has these deep links. Can be interactive? What do they do with social media? What's their portfolio? Let me request a quote. Google didn't do that, in my case. Google doesn't always do the same, doesn't, Google doesn't always give the same results to everyone even if they're doing the exact same search. There's many factors involved. Their algorithm, their technique for results is different. So this is cool, I want that, I want it to go to a deep link of ours, and look at this, it also shows the rating here on Yelp and contact information right away. Yahoo didn't do that. Yahoo also didn't show a map to our office. And all of that. That looks nice. That stands out. After that, there's another deep link here, directly to services. There's our Twitter. Twitter is also listed on Google, but on Bing, it also lists the number of uh, stats, the number of followers and tweets and such. 
<coughs> Google didn't do that. There's our Yelp, there's our Facebook, there's the Facebook. You can also give ratings on Facebook. It shows that. There's the same LinkedIn videos. Here's one that did not show up at all on Google, the Vimeo video service. YouTube is the big famous video service, of course. One of those other big ones is Vimeo. So, guess what? Who owns, <coughs> who owns YouTube? <coughs> Google. So, the Google search results page showed a Google product result, and then the Bing one, which is not owned by Google, Bing is owned by Microsoft, another big multi-billion dollar company, they showed Vimeo. Bing does, uh, Microsoft does not own Vimeo, but they showed an alternative video site as well as the Google video site. On the right side it also shows some photos. These are examples of logos that the company has created for branding and such. So different results, same web. <clears throat> we'll do one more search. Back to Google, and this time search for your company Search one keyword about what your company is about. Don't get too complicated here. I'm simply going to search web design. I'm not going to type in any other special modifiers to prove a point. I'm just going to search web design. This company does web design. We also do social media, marketing, etc. But I'm just going to see here web design, web design search. One point five billion results in San Diego. How did it know I'm in San Diego? I'll talk about that. But here's a bunch of results. I see a cool map. I see driving directions. I see articles in the news, pictures. Okay, I'll do the same search in Bing. Huh, two billion results instead of one and a half billion. <clears throat> I don't uh, see a map, but I do. I see a bunch of ratings. I see some articles and such, but I don't see my company. This is to show you about the problem about being a needle in a haystack. My company is yet another web designer. Oh. Yet another social media company. Yet another photography company. Yet another human resources company. Your company, hate to say it, is yet another realtor. Yet another fencing company. Yet another dog walking company. Yet another bakery. Yet another company. So it's going to be hard, depending on your industry perhaps, to crack the top 10. But guess what? Both search engines give you a very easy way to crack to crack that top 10. What was that easy way again? You take out your wallet and you put out your credit card and you pay. Yes. So for the less savvy web users among us, and there are hundreds of millions, the number one result is the best. Literally the number one result, the top result. So there's many people that are going to see this page and get overwhelmed, click on the number one result digitalvertex.com. They're at the very top because they're the best, right? Maybe not, maybe yes, but they definitely paid to be number one, quote-unquote number one. If you are a more savvy web user, of course, you probably know, or you yourself have the philosophy of avoiding the ads. A lot of people don't. They see this top, these top three results, they're the best. They're at the top. Okay, I'm going to actually hire a QCR agency or maybe onefree.com. For only $2,000 I can make a great website. Or maybe mopro.com. Or Squarespace. Or maybe um, Bop Design, maybe KMJ Web Design, maybe San Diego Website Design, etc. Okay, well, again, you might be a more savvy web user, you're gonna skip the ads. Then I'll go to the organic results. 
eventually you get results that people didn't pay for. Remember one result here then that I see is bobdesign.com. Then Jacob Tyler. Then a review. Then a directory listing on Yelp. So one of those valuable top 10 spots is taken by a directory site. Not any one company, but a site that tells you about more web design companies. What's the next slot taken up by? A Wikipedia article on what web design is. And then after that we get news about web design. Question. So the ones on the, at the top obviously that say ad were the ones that are paid? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then some pictures, and then by that time we get to real results again and we get tinyfrog.com. Question. When it's not an organic uh, web uh, SEO, what is it called? Uh, PPC. PPC. One, one name for the PPC. Pay per click. You're paying to get uh, to get pay, uh, to get clicked okay. on the search engines. PPC. That's one term. And then after that, we get um, Ash Web Studio. And then web design solutions. <coughs> and then web design org. Mm -hmm. I noticed that sometimes it'll, let's say it's a loft clothing company, it'll have them up in the ads, and then it'll have them in the organic searches too. Mm -hmm. They might have over optimized. They might have done overkill in that they did it organically, but then they're also paying for it. Maybe they forgot to stop paying for it. Uh, so they appear in two spots and. For some people, that will be great because then it appears twice and they'll feel they're double good. So they'll click it and they'll hire them. For some people, let's say they're spammy. They're paying to be up there and they're down here too. I'm going to avoid them. You don't know what your, what your potential clientele really think about your results. So I think that's a little overkill when you appear on both. But on the one hand, they're doing it right. They're doing it well. They're paying for it and doing organic. So they should probably cut out or remove the paid at the moment and ride their organic. Yes. Can when it's considered, uh, when you use keyword search and make people pay for keywords, um, is that considered organic or is that big, 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 big? <laughs> No. When you so you're saying that when you do your keyword search and you pay Google or Bing for keywords? Well, I work for a property management company that we actually paid for a, a, a design agency to do a keyword search. So. Like if we wanted uh, apartments in a certain region, we had to actually pay for those words that, that go in a listing of searches. When you do search for it's still the same thing. It's still related in that you're paying to find the best keywords to help you rise above the competition. You're still paying for it. It's still, it's still PPC. It's not organic. An aspect of that would be perhaps you paid a social an, an SEO company to develop your keyword yeah. strategy. And then once you've got that keyword strategy, then you apply it to your site. Not that you're paying Google to, for those keywords or Bing, but that you're using those keywords. That uh, is what we'll be talking about in this class. Developing our keyword strategy, not paying for it, developing it ourselves, and then applying it. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Let me compare then again over at uh, Bing. On Bing, at the moment, they don't quite, they're not quite so obvious about their ads. I don't see a big yellow or a little yellow ad marker. It does have that it's listed as an ad right there, but you might not notice it. So again, you might think, great, I need a website, Wix.com. Not that they're good or bad, I'm just saying that they're the number one result. And for many people, that'll be the one that they click on. And for many people, this will be the perfect result. Great. But that's not my company. If I, as I go down, okay, I'm going to skip the, or, the paid results. Let's see, organic. Eventually, it's not quite obvious as it should be. But the first result, webdesign.org. On Google, that was the last result on the first page. On Bing, it's the first result on the first page. Jacob, Jacob Tyler, second result on Bing, second result on Google, organic. Then we've got the article about Wikipedia, and then we've got web.com, and then we've got the, this is funny. The official Google Web Designer Handbook as a top result on Bing. I'll provide you that link a little later. But this is the official Web Designer Handbook. Is that like, so that's from Google? It's from Google, yeah. We'll be talking about that, that the search engines themselves are going to tell us what to do and what not to do. Um, 
So one of the valuable top 10 slots here is taken up by that, the do-it-yourself manual, and then about, and then other companies. So here in this result, Bing is much more selective about real organic results appearing. Google shows a few more real web designers. The point is, with this kind of search that I did, this generic keyword search, it's going to be very hard to crack this list unless you are amazing at web design and have been doing it since day one, since the day you gave uh, Tim Berners-Lee the idea to design the web. But not everyone is going to be that amazing. But everyone can potentially rank, and not through paying, through organic SEO, which is what this whole class is about. This is the needle in the haystack. Let's get a little more specific to another search here. I was very generic. I didn't mention San Diego, but it did show me results of San Diego because modern web browsers like Google Chrome, Firefox, Safari, whatever, are actually transmitting a lot of information you don't realize. One of them is your location. So the search engines look at that info and say, you're probably interested in web designers in San Diego, even though I didn't say San Diego. Well, what if I want to target any person that needs a website from all over California? Someone up in Arcata, uh, I could potentially do a website for them. We'll just Skype. We'll do their website. But the bias here is that it automatically showed San Diego because I'm in San Diego. You, as a user of the web, for probably the last 5, 10, 15, 20 years, whatever your web history is, you've probably gotten more savvy at using the web. And when you search, and after many times of frustration of not getting the best results, you search a little bit more smartly now probably. You're more specific. You, you, you type in more keywords here. Maybe you picked it up yourself somewhere, or maybe someone taught you, but you're perhaps more specific. So let's go back here and do a search instead. Affordable web designers in San Diego. And I'm going to search the same I'm going to search the same thing on both engines. So Cooker Agency appears number one there. They obviously paid for some of these keywords and such to be found. And MoPro takes over there too. And then SimpleNerds.com and then uh, Creative House Web, and then That's Gravy. Just by looking at this result here, let me zoom out a little bit, we've got some results at the top and some in this map area. Just um, without thinking about it too much, which of these would you want to click on? This section or that section? Creative Probably the map section. Doesn't it stand out more? I see the reviews right away. I see them on a map. Right away, visually, this draws my eye more than plain old links. Yeah. I want to appear there. I want to appear on a map like that. Uh, same thing with Bing. They have map results. I want to appear there. We'll talk about it in more detail later, but this is basically creating a listing on the search engines of a location. Location, perhaps, is something you never thought of. I've got my company's address on the home page. Is that enough? Probably not. I need to go through the extra steps to add my location to Bing and Google so that I get this so that I get this free advertising so that I get visible here but if you actually go through sometimes these results are actually being fed in from other places like Yelp SEM search engine marketing are you on Yelp yes or no you probably are, even if you yourself never created your Yelp account. Someone else did to praise you or to slam you. So if you're not thinking about it, go search yourself on Yelp. Do you have a listing on Yelp? If you do, you need to go through the process of claiming your profile so that you can answer the bad reviews to hopefully turn them into good reviews to thank the good reviews so that you can get more word-of-mouth uh, referrals. So Yelp is another thing that's very important nowadays. It's part of SEM. 
Yes. I'm happy to report I'm on there. Great. <laughs> so I think your class is reporting. Great. So you know a lot of what you say when you teach is this. Well, so thank you. I'm learning how to make that work for my clients. Excellent. Down, you know, thank you. And let's uh, let's confirm to the class that I did not pay you to say that. No. <laughs> 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 so, Yelp and other review sites. Um, Yelp is one of the biggest ones. It's it's really grown to be a review site for everything: restaurants, hair salons, web design companies, lawyers, realtors, etc. Does anyone know any other review sites out there? I was about to ask you that too. <laughs> anyone know any other review Angie? sites? Angie's List. They're another big one. They have a different sort of business model than Yelp. But if I get on if I get on Angie's List, that's another place for me to get stars and reviews and referrals. Yes. Um, Thumbtack, if you have a specific service, Fine. I didn't know that one. So Thumbtack, just yeah. Thumbtack.com. Yeah. Thumbtack? Yeah. They're actually pretty good too. Um, I got my background checked in them as well. Oh, okay. Cool. Let me write that down. There's always something new to learn. So Thumbtack seems to be another place where you can get reviews and such. What, what is the other one that's like Angie's List? A couple of others off the top of my head. There's also Kudzu.com, K-U-D-Z-U, Kudzu.com. That's another place where people can... Uh, uh, this is a little bit more for services. So if you've got a service of actual you know, physical things and such, uh, here's a place where you can get in there and get ranked and reviewed and found. KUDZU.com, like the plant. Kudzu, or Kudzu, however you like to pronounce it. And um, another one is uh, TripAdvisor. This one is another specific one. Again, there's plenty of them out there. I don't know them all, but I know these because I've dealt with these for our various clients. One of the clients, a couple of the clients that we have are restaurants. So TripAdvisor is great about, I'm going to visit San Diego. I'm coming from, I'm coming from, um, from Seattle to escape the rain, to get into the San Diego rain. Um, and I'm going to look at TripAdvisor about what's a good restaurant in, on, uh, in, in San Diego, in Chula Vista. For example, Mexican food in Chula Vista. So we get all of these results. Oops, let me get it backwards. Chula Vista, um, the Italian food. For example, right here, this is one of our other clients, Italianissimo Trattoria. They are an Italian food restaurant in Chula Vista. 91 reviews on TripAdvisor, very highly reviewed, higher than La Bella Pizza Garden that's been around for 30 years. Higher than Felipe's Pizza Garden that's been around for 50 years. Mangia Italiano, the direct competitor that's down the street. More reviews. My client has more reviews and all of that. Vialago, etc., etc. So, yet another place for you to get found at. SEM, search engine marketing. What are you doing outside of your website? If you've only got a website, that's a piece of the puzzle. And getting to be a smaller piece of the puzzle. So the search that I did here perhaps is giving me better results, and I'm, and, uh, I'm not, you're not really going to find my company here just yet either, because it's still more about specificity. How specific are you? You yourself are probably getting better at being more specific when you search. The rest of the web population as well, because not finding the best results is frustrating, so you get more specific. And nowadays, with these little things in our pockets, these phones, we can do this. What's a good Mexican food restaurant nearby? Here are 10 Mexican restaurants here do not have good reviews. Okay, natural language search. I asked it like a person, and I have a Windows phone, so this is Cortana. Cortana told me these are the best results, best because of the Yelp res reviews. And I see here number one nearby, La Fuente Mexican Food. It's got 89 reviews, four stars. Uh, it's one mile away. How does it know I'm one mile away? GPS. Location. Location. Then we've got Palomino's Mexican and Seafood, one mile away on Convoy. It's got 101 reviews, four stars, Lupus Taco Shop, blah, blah, blah. Sombrero Mexican Food, 1.9 miles away, four stars. 
this is becoming more of a search that people are doing. You yourself may ne never have done it. None of your family, you don't know anyone that's done it. Millions of people, hundreds of millions of people are doing this now. Mobile search is becoming the number one thing, the number one source of traffic. Not sitting down on a computer, not sitting down on a laptop. Search just like this, asking it. And I've got a Windows phone, so Bing is my default search. I can change it to Yahoo and I'll get the same result. You can take out your Samsung Galaxy and ask it the same thing. Okay, Google, what's a good search engine? Uh, what's a good uh, taco shop? It'll tell you. Or uh, uh, Siri, where can I get a good, uh, you know, a good haircut? And it'll tell you. They're all getting pretty smart. Natural language search. That's why we're doing this kind of search, more detailed. Because the search that we did a moment ago with simply web design, that used to work in the old days, in the ancient days of the web, five years ago. That used to work because there were less websites, less, less search engine optimizers. Five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, all you needed to do is figure out, my website's about web design, I'm a web design company, I'm going to take that keyword and put it all over my site. I'm going to go buy victorwebdesign.com. I'm going to put web design in my logo, in the footer, in the heading, in each article, everything. I'm going to stuff my website with that keyword. And that used to work. But if it worked for us, the good guys, it also works for the bad guys, the spammers, the scammers. It also works for them because then what they figured out was, I'm going to put every word in the dictionary on my website. And they would then rank higher than you because the search engines were not as smart. The algorithm wasn't as smart and it would simply rank you or rank them because it had every word, every possible word. They would do these techniques, these really underhanded techniques where they would have a sentence this text here would be, the font color would be white, and they would put it on a white background, and for us would be invisible, but for the search engines they would see it. And that kind of underhanded technique is known as black hat SEO. Black hat SEO. It's not the technique you want to do anymore. Black hat from the classic cowboy movies. When the bad guys ride into town shooting their six shooters and taking over the town, what kind of hats are they wearing? Black hats. Then the sheriff comes to clean up the town. What kind of hat is he wearing? A white hat. Black hat SEO, white hat SEO. This class, of course, is about white hat SEO. We'll talk about the correct techniques, the modern techniques, the techniques that the search engines recommend themselves. I'll be mentioning the black hat ones in, in, in the service of you not to do it. Because if you're engaging in the bad techniques and the search engines find out, then you're going to plummet in the rankings. Behave like a spammer, they'll treat you like a spammer. Even though I trust you, you're not a spammer. But they're not going to trust you. The search engines nowadays, basically, they are uh, guilty until proven innocent. Guilty by association. Shoot first, ask questions later. They're going to see that you're doing techniques that are negative. They're going to say this is a spam site down on page 400. And it's going to be hard to climb out of that hole of negative SEO. Some stuff, when you go up and get in the trenches. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you get in that sand trap, you better get your sand wedge. Yes. Even the keywords can work against you because, again, keyword stuffing. Um, what we've done is, however, the modern version here, the right version, we've done what is known as the long tail keyword strategy. Thinking about keywords more specifically, more in detail, rather than web design. Uh, I'm going to be using affordable web design, San Diego, in my site. And I'll talk about exactly how, of course. But the concept that I'm segueing into is we want to think about the long tail keyword strategy. Let me explain why. It's called long tail. I'm going to make a little chart here, and I'll make this chart available for you on the folder in just a moment. We've got X and we've got Y. We've got 
we've got on the um, on the Y on the vertical we've got keyword on the X on the horizontal we've got frequency I'm sorry I got it backwards I always do this keyword on the bottom F frequency on the on on the vertical frequency on the vertical and keyword on the horizontal and then we've got a line that looks something like this if I use the right tool a line that looks like this okay this is long tail keyword strategy. Let's break down what I've drawn here. There are some keywords on this side here that are going to be used a lot by everyone. Okay. You're not going to be found with those keywords. Web design. Everyone might be using web design as a keyword. So is everyone else. Frequently used. You're going to be a little needle in a big haystack. Further over here, you've got more detailed keywords in the long tail. Affordable web designers for restaurants in San Diego. Less competition. Less usage. So that's the long tail keyword. Strategy. Because if you extrapolate the graph, there it is. And then further over here is the, is the back of a cow. And there's its tail. Right? Long tail keyword strategy. That's what we're going to be talking about and as an activity in just a moment. We're going to be developing our long tail keyword strategy because it's very important for us to define what our website is about, who it's for, who would care about it, and how can the search engines organize it and rank you when someone searches. I'm going to save this and I'll put it in the network folder in a little while. Long keyword strategy. But this is what we're going to be talking about, figuring out what our keywords are, the long tail keywords, and how to use them. Because let's say we've figured out our keywords, but we're still not going to engage in the old tactics of keyword stuffing, in that we use those keywords over and over and over and over as much as possible. Um, because now, Unfortunately, techniques that used to work don't work anymore, or worse, now they penalize you, they hurt you. It used to be that I found those keywords, web design, and I put it everywhere in my site, because that way the search engines understood what your site is about. Now, they see that, the search engines see that technique, and they see that spammers do that, you're a spammer. So we'll see how to use these keywords judiciously and appropriately as the course goes on. So this keyword search here, the long tail keyword, is what we're still what we're gonna we're gonna strive to do. And still, my company didn't appear here. That's okay, because what if this strategy still gets me as number one on a Yelp search, or an Angie's List search, or a Facebook search? The search engines themselves obviously are the number one priority to rank, but ancillary um, platforms to rank are are you found on Twitter? Are you found on Facebook? Are you found on Yelp? All of the stuff extra. So what I'm saying, it's not hard, it's complicated. You've got to do your website, but you also need to tweet once in a while, blog once in a while, answer those questions on Yelp, make a great looking website, and put your keywords in a blog post, but do it once a month, once a quarter. Often. Don't just make a website and leave it alone for a year. No wonder I don't have traffic. You have to keep it up to date. Keep nurturing it like a plant. So I'll be giving you handouts that have techniques and advice and to-do lists for you to do. And of course I mentioned the book, those two books in the syllabus. Much more information for you to, to look at and digest and apply. It is. They just updated it. I forgot to update it on the syllabus. 
the author does uh, go in and update it because this stuff changes. Yeah. SEO is a moving target. Again, keywords used to work. Now it's long tail keywords. The search engines move the goalpost. That's annoying, but necessary because the spammers figure out those techniques and abuse them, and the search engines have to go back to the drawing board and fix the results so that you get found and not the spammers. Spammers can, of course, always pay $1,000 and be number one here. And for some company, and I'm not saying any of these are spammers, but I'm saying that a spammer could pay a bunch of money and be number one, and, and be number one for like a week until Google realizes, oh, they're a spammer, and then cuts their funding and cuts them out. But after that week, they got clients and made $10,000. Hmm. So it's an ever-moving target. It's an ever-changing game. Those are some things to think about, so we'll take one more break, we'll take questions and then we'll take one more break, and when we come back I'll have another handout for you where we do this, um, where we do this activity that will really help you think about your long tail keywords, think about your target audience, and all of these ancillary things that you didn't really think about in SEO. Any general questions? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if I'm coming out reasonably high on Bing, I'm kind of reticent to uh, alter my code. I, I have this feeling like if I alter anything, I'll also some of my clients that I'll sink again. So what's the strategy there? Uh, honestly, if the techniques that you are using for Bing are positive ones and they keep you ranking highly, it should not affect also what you add to it in addition for Google. In addition. In addition. So it could really only help you if what we're going to talk about. And again, you don't have to apply any of these things directly right now. You can learn them, digest them, and then figure out what to do. But most likely you will be able to still in keep your, your good ranking on Bing, even increase perhaps, and then also get that ranking up on Google as we talk about these concepts. All right, it's 2.33. Let's take one more break. We'll be back at 2.43, and we'll go on with more stuff.